Um, so we did ask Ray this question, but we get it a lot is how much nitrogen or fertilizer will this cover crop produce? And how much do I need to apply in order to get this cover crop started? Oh my, that's, that's a loaded question. <laughs> but it is one we get a lot. And, yeah. and uh, like so many loaded questions, the answer is it depends. Um, if, if you want maximum productivity out of a cover crop, just I want maximum biomass, I would probably go a mix that is very high in grasses with a lot of nitrogen fertilizer. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. If, however, you're wanting to stimulate your soil biology, increase your soil health, so forth, and, and do that with a minimum of synthetic inputs, you the route I would probably take is to include a fairly high level of legumes and inoculate with the biazo. Um, I, you know, that way you can make all the plants in the mix fix nitrogen. And um, as far as how much you get, um, essentially, you can eyeball a cover crop mix look at the biomass and every if you look at the protein content in that biomass um, each uh, protein 1% nitrogen equals 6.25% protein and so if you look at this biomass that's 13% protein that's 2% nitrogen so if you convert biomass into that so if you have uh, two tons an acre of legume biomass, that's um, let's say 4% nitrogen. Um, when the bacteria break that down, half of it gets consumed by the bacteria. The other half will probably get kicked out. So you can do the math and figure out about how much nitrogen you get out of that. Um, the, the standard rule of thumb is the microbes eat first and they're going to eat about half the nitrogen that's in that cover crop. Um, if you're in that carbon nitrogen ratio where legumes are in that 20 to 30 range, about half of the, the total nitrogen content is going to be available for the next crop. Keith, I didn't. I don't feel I did a very good job of explaining that. <laughs> in the gaps there. Well, it, it, certainly it, it depends on a lot of different things, and you know, if if your goal is to produce a lot of nitrogen, then you really need to load up on legumes. And you know what I tell people is the only the only real way to know is you got to pull a sample, send it in, and have it tested. And again, that webinar with Dr. Ward, we we kind of went through that. Uh, how you do that, you know, we. Uh, the, the vets that uh, we were looking at and we did some videos on and we'll have more information down the road about that. But, you know, that came back 224 pounds of nitrogen uh, that was in that biomass. And when Dale and I looked at it, we were, we were guessing lower than that, but it, it really was cranking it out. A lot of mixes, if you have a diverse cover crop mix, you know, that has, you know, 30% legumes and 70% broad leaves of which maybe half of that is grasses, you know, which is fairly typical. It's not uncommon to see 60 to 80 pounds of nitrogen if you send that in for a test. That's that's pretty standard, pretty common. Some of that's being produced by the legumes, some of that is just being cycled by the grasses, but you're still keeping it from getting away from you. And so, you know, to me, that still counts. That still counts as nitrogen that's gonna be available for the next crop. And so. Uh, that's that's a pretty decent rule of thumb. As far as the, the fertilizer question, when people ask me, should they fertilize their mix? How much should they put on? Uh, it it, it kind of depends on your goals. If your goal is to graze or to hay and you're gonna be removing biomass, then then I think you need to grow as much as you can. And so then I think it is worth some, some fertilizer investment. I generally tell people 40 to 50 pounds is probably all you need. You're not trying to produce a grain crop. So you don't have to go crazy on how much nitrogen you put out there because you're not, you know, a lot of the nitrogen you put on a crop is to produce grain. And we're not interested in producing grain, just the forage part. 
So 40 to 50 pounds generally is sufficient to really make a big boost or a big notice. Uh, but if your goal is to produce as much soil benefits as you can, then like Dale says, you know, stay away from the, the synthetic nitrogens and put, you know, invest three, three and a half dollars an acre in the Viezo and let it go to work and make your cover crop work for you. Um, and, and so again, it just kind of depends on what your goals are and how much you're going to put out there after it. The other thing with, especially like with the phosphorus, if, if your soils are really low in phosphorus, it may not be a bad idea to put some of that out there for the cover crop because if you're not hauling that cover crop off in a hay bale, that phosphorus is going to cycle and stay out there for the next crop. So a lot of times what we would do uh, is, is we would put the phosphorus out there in the summer after wheat harvest, let the cover crop utilize it. We know that those, those winter killed summer cover crops are going to cycle pretty completely by the time the corn is needing it. So we're essentially pre-fertilizing for our corn by putting it out there for the cover crop, but we're letting the cover crop use it first and then cycle and decompose it back through the system. Um, and so we don't feel like that was money that we were attributing an, in, uh, an input investment attributed to the cover crop. It's more for the next cash crop, but we're letting the cover crop use it first and then cycle it back through the system. Right, you're fertilizing two crops with one application and one fertilizer. No. Um, and as far as the crop after the cover crop, um, you know, so much of that depends on the carbon nitrogen ratio of the material and how long it has to decay. Um, and uh, a lot of it also depends on how many years you've been doing this cover crop thing. Um, I hear a lot of people tell me that, you know, they, they planted a cover crop and the, the first, the first, very first cover crop you grow, I would not give much, if any, nitrogen credit to it. I mean, you'll get some, but I wouldn't count on it unless you, you are doing some testing and you know where you sit. But once you get the system going, you know, I said half the nitrogen in that cover crop will be available to the next crop. Once you've done this three or four years, you start adding it and a half of this cover crop, you know, you'll get half of last year's, you get a quarter of the year before, you get an eighth of the year before that, and a sixteenth of the year before that. The more times you do this, the bigger the pool of organic nitrogen you build up. And eventually, you get to where you have a very large pool of organic nitrogen you can tap into.